what is up everybody it is your boys that here back at it again to drop the 16k special thank you guys so much for getting me to this amazing milestone so here is my thank you video to you all what if deku was garo's reincarnation a long long time ago i did what if deku learned the water stream rock smashing fist in case some of you guys have seen that video you know shout out to you guys but this is going to be a revamp version very different but similar in some aspects to that story but that being said i don't want to waste you guys too time too long so go ahead and get your snacks tell a friend to tell another friend check out the links in the description and um i'm just gonna go ahead and uh get started so uh hit it <laughs> Okay, so we start our story off when Deku was basically four years old. At this point, Bakugo had just recently gotten his quirk, and this is on a day where they're all basically at school. All of them would be during at recess time at this point, and they're like in preschool at this point, right? They would all basically be in recess, and this is when they're all basically hanging out outside. This is when Bakugo would go to Deku and be like, hey Deku, when are you going to get your quirk? Huh? Are you going to be quirkless or something? Deku would look at Bakugo and he's like, I, I don't think so, Bakugo. I mean, I think I should get my quirk soon. And Bakugo would be like, yeah, whatever. Well, even if you do get your quirk, it's not going to be as cool as mine. Deku would look at him and be like, that's mean, Kachan. And he would say, yeah, whatever. Well, do you guys want to play something? And this one, he would basically look towards his, his other little buddies. And they would be like, yeah, yeah, let's play something. As Bakugo would look at them, he'd just smile and be like, all right. How about we play heroes? And they would all be like, okay, well, uh, who's going to be the villain? As Bakugo would point at Deku, and they would all just start chuckling to themselves. This is when Deku would be like, huh? But I'm always the villain. Why can I not be a hero? Bakugo's like, huh? think of a, a hero would have no quirk that's impossible Deku you're gonna be a villain as he would say all right guys let's go and they would immediately rush at Deku as they would just start beating him up with all of their quirks obviously they wouldn't do nothing too crazy I mean they are four years old so they would beat him up but you know they wouldn't kill the kid so yeah they would hurt Deku pretty bad and it's at this point that Deku would basically learn the lesson of well not everyone in this world is equal one thing that I did probably forget to mention is that in this version of events, Deku is going to basically look exactly like Kid Garo, and Garo in general. He is his reincarnation after all. That being said, this is when Deku would basically just, you know, grow up still wanting to become a hero. And we're just basically going to fast forward about two years into the future. At this point, Deku would be six years old. And Deku would always, anytime that he wants to hang out with Bakugo, he would always be forced to fill the villain role. This would basically lead to Deku starting to not like playing hero anymore, but in Deku's heart of hearts, Deku would know that he wants to become a hero and that's all he wants to do. He wants to save people, not hurt people. He doesn't want to be a villain. He doesn't even look up to villains and think that, oh, you know, maybe the villain is kind of right. He doesn't have that mentality. He's still good old Deku, just having a different type of bullying going on. That being said, this is when about two years afterwards, Deku would come home crying, bawling his eyes out, telling his mother that he's he's so weak and useless. If only he had a quirk, he could prove to those other kids that he's not just some villain. And this is when Inka would say, villain? Izuku, you're not a villain. And Deku would be like, but that's what they call me. They always say I'm a villain. And Inka would just look at Deku and she would pat him on the head and just be like, don't worry, Izuku. How about, how about I call Grandpa? Maybe he can train you with something. Maybe give you a little bit of self-defense. Deku would say, Grandpa? What? I haven't seen him in so long. Call him, call him. He would get so excited. Seeing as he saw him about well, two years ago, right before it, all the bullying really started. That being said, Bang would get a call. And yes, Deku's grandpa is going to be Bang. This would lead to Inko being like, okay, well, I'll call dad right now. And she would basically proceed to call Bang over the phone. As he would answer the call and just be like, hey, what's up? Uh, she would tell him that, you know, her his grandson is struggling in school. A lot of kids pick on him and he's having a very hard time fitting in. This one, Bang would say, oh, really? And he would basically just begin to be like, well, I'll be right over. Don't worry about it. As he lives pretty far away, but it's about a one day drive or like a one hour to two hour plane flight right it's about that long in terms of distance he would take a plane over there and he would leave one of his students in charge of the dojo due to the fact that he still has a dojo 
Oh, one more thing that I did forget to mention is that Bang, he was a pro hero long, long ago. Back then when it was not even that cool of a profession. Back then when it wasn't popular and it was more, more vigilantism, I guess you could say. That being said, this would basically lead to Deku essentially seeing his grandpa and as soon as he walks in the door Deku would rush over to him and he's like grandpa grandpa hey and he would basically hug Deku he's like there's my little guy he would just start basically you know being some you know casual grandpa and he would pick him up as Deku was just like whoa you're so strong this is when you know Bang would just start laughing and he would just be like yeah I guess and well at this point Bang is not yet as old as he is in the One Punch Man anime he's about let's say 10 years 10 years younger yeah 10 years younger right and this is when we are basically just going to have the time to which Deku is basically going to have to go over there with Bang he's going to basically train him for these next couple of days Bang would basically ask Deku if he wants to train Bang could teach him ways to be with or even above those kids with quirks I mean look at him he's quirkless Deku would say what Grandpa, you're quirkless? And Bang would just say, yeah, I am. And I run a martial arts dojo, which is powerful. I even used to be a pro hero. Deku would say, yeah, yeah, pro hero. Pro hero wasn't even a thing back then. And there's no pictures or proof in the records. So I don't believe you. And Bang would just start being like, ah, whatever. Kid will be kid. And this is when he would basically look towards Deku's direction as he would say, well, what do you say, Deku? Do you want to train with me? As Izuku would look at Bang, he would basically just be like, yeah 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 i'll train and and that way i can be powerful and show bakugo that i'm not weak and this would lead to bang training deku for the next two weeks until deku realizes that he loves this he's an extremely fast learner at that and he's learning at about the same pace as garo did with the goal of showing people that he is no longer going to be weak this would lead to Bang asking Inko if he can take Deku with him for a couple of years due to the fact that he has to train his dojo and it would be a fun experience to spend a couple of years with his grandson. Inko would look at Bang and she would say, I, I don't know, I, I don't know if it would be okay for me to be away from my baby for that long. And Bang would say, well, I mean, I raised you just fine, didn't I? And she would look at him and be like, dad, but it's not like that. It's, you know, I, I don't want to be away from my Izuku for so long. Bang would look at her and just be like, I understand. And also, quick intermission real quick. If you guys keep hearing like a weird squeaky noise, it's my chair. Sometimes it makes weird noises, but yeah, it's my chair. And uh, also, in case there is any little screams or something in the background, pause, pause. That sounded way too sus. But in case there's any like loud noises coming from my background, don't worry. It's probably my siblings and, you know, that will happen every now and then just because it's about 10 32 a.m right now and they're probably gonna wake up anytime soon so with that being said yeah just had to give you guys that heads up that being said deku would end up going off to train with bank for about four years however after the four years are over inko would ask deku if he's ready to come back and deku would say that he's not He's learning so much and making so many friends. He finally feels like he found a place where he belongs. Deku would basically just be smiling. It had been so long since Deku had felt this way. And after Inka would see the happiness in his voice, she would not question Deku or Bang. And Deku would continue to train with Bang until he is about 16 years old, to which we are going to be having a big time skip. At this point, Deku would be at the same level that Garo is when he was introduced to us. So Deku is like absolutely no slouch when it comes to combat ability. Deku is going to be pretty powerful. That being said, yeah, Deku is a... Um, He's strong. He, he is a strong boy. <laughs> so yeah, that being said, this is when Deku would basically be 16 years old and he would finally be packing his stuff up to go back with Inko, go back to Japan. Of course, he was still technically in Japan, just not in the area which Inko was in. And this is when Bang would walk in the room, knock on the door and be like, knock, knock. As he would walk in the room and Deku would look at his, his grandfather, just being like, hey, Gramps, what's up? As he would look at Deku, sit down by his bed and just be like, come here, boy. I want to talk to you. He would sit down next to his grandpa and he'd say, what's up? He'd basically look at Deku as he would tell him that, well, it's been fun the time that they've spent together, right? Deku would look at Bang as he would smile and say, it sure has. It's been amazing. I, 
I'm honestly kind of sad to go. I, it'll be tough not seeing you for a while. And Bang would look at Deku as he would basically pull him in for a hug and tell him that not to worry, you know. He's grown much more powerful than he was, at, even at his age at this time. And he believes wholeheartedly that Deku will become a great hero someday. Deku would then look at Bang as he would smile and hug his grandpa back. As this one, he would say, all right, enough, enough sentimental stuff. How about one final test before you leave? I want to see just how strong you've gotten. And Deku would say, so what? Do you want to have another little game of Shoji? Or, you know, do you want to play that one game that, uh, what's it called? Bang played with Saitama where he basically kept hitting his head with a little mallet. Bang would be like, no, 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 it's nothing like that. We're going to spar. Deku would say, oh, we do that all the time. What's the difference? What's the difference? And this time, Bang would say that we're going to go all out. As Deku would look at his grandpa, he would smirk and say, you ready? You sure you're ready for that, Gramps? I think you might be getting a little too old to keep up with me. As, you know, freaking Bang would just start dying of laughter. And he'd be like, all right, kid. Pretty cocky, ain't you? As they would go over to a place with a beautiful waterfall and a bunch of giant rocks, Bang would then tell Deku, does this look old to you? As he would... Breathe in and then say, Water Stream Rock Smashing Fist! Bam! And just destroy a gigantic boulder. Like, this boulder was no joke. He would obliterate that to dust. And Deku would just stare at that as he would say, That's nothing. As he would then, like, reel back his kick. And without using any Water Stream techniques, he would literally shatter that thing with a kick. Like, no weird techniques into it. Just pure physical strength. Deku would be, um, he'd be broken to say the least, like to say the absolute least, Deku is absolutely broken, just completely, just, ooh, he's as strong as Garo, so yeah, he's pretty powerful, that being said, Deku would basically look at his grandpa as he would say, uh, ready, as he would start stretching his arms, his hamstrings, you know, his thighs and all that stuff, and he would then, and Bang would then look towards Deku as he would say, all right, I'm ready, Ass. he would just crack his neck and take off his shirt to which Deku would see how ripped Bang is he would then say you don't gotta show off old man as Bang would just look at him and start chuckling this is when Deku would say all right then I'll do the same and Deku would have the exact same build as Garo as he would throw his shirt off they would both be looking ripped and everybody from the dojo would come out to watch this battle this this is when Deku and, and Bang would rush at each other as you guys are not going to get to find out how this battle goes whatsoever until later on that being said, the battle would conclude, and the winner would win. <laughs> you guys don't get to know who wins that. That being said, this is when Deku would say goodbye to his grandpa and everybody in the dojo, as his grandpa would give him a hero outfit. This outfit being the same one that Garo wears in One Punch Man, and Deku would cherish it. It's made out of materials that won't burn, they won't, you know, rip. It's made out of pretty indestructible fabric, so Deku will be most certainly good with that. And this is when Deku would hug his grandpa once more, telling him that he's so thankful for everything that he had done to him. For him, not to him, but for him. As well, this is when Deku would basically get on the train and he would get ready for an eight hour train ride as, yeah, it's going to take a long time. But since it's by train, it's going to be a little faster. That being said, this is when Deku would get on the train. And due to the fact that he hasn't seen his mother in real life for so long, all he's been able to really do is really call her through FaceTime and text her for these last couple of years. Deku doesn't know what kind of condition Inko's in. So he's going to be in for a surprise when he sees Chub Chubs over there in the door greeting him. <laughs> that being said, this is when we will now cut over to the day of the sludge villain. The, the day that Deku arrives is literally the day that the sludge villain incident happened. Just like in canon, all Might ends up capturing him and he actually ends up saving a different kid from the sludge villain That being said the kid does not end up grabbing onto All Might's leg However, All Might still ends up dropping the bottle because he's very clumsy and not really thinking too good about the about the situation that he's in That being said the bottle still drops and Bakugo still ends up getting captured by the sludge villain This is when Deku would basically just be walking through as he would have just gotten off of the bus station He would be walking near the area until he finally hears something going off in the distance he would be thinking that it's been so long since he's been back in the city and this is when he would hear a giant explosion go off as Deku would say what 
What was that? He would then start running towards the explosion, and this is when he would see that there was a villain. As he would say, awesome, there's a villain attack, heroes are going to start coming in. As this is when Deku would see that all the heroes that were present were not doing anything. And Deku would notice that there's a kid in there. This is when Deku would yell, do something, there's a kid in there. And the heroes would look at the kid as they would say, we can't, our quirks aren't made for this, we need to wait for a stronger hero. As after Deku hears that, he would just think that, that's such a disgrace. He would then immediately throw his shirt off and he would just start ru He would jump over the crowd of people and rush at the sludge villain. As Deku would say, if the heroes don't want to do anything, then I will. As he would jump from side to side from the buildings and he would then rush at the sludge villain with such speed and force that it would create a wind pressure, Gale Palm, that would send the sludge villain flying off of Bakugo. But Deku would grab Bakugo's arm and push him in towards him as he would save Bakugo. This is when he would notice who this is and he would think Kachan as this is when a bunch of people would surround him before he even got the chance to do anything and heroes would start to be like kid that was incredible what's your quirk Deku would look at all of them and say uh I'm quirkless as they would say there's no way this kid is quirkless dude you're awesome and they would start telling him that if he ever wants to go pro to go to their agency Deku would say sure thing and this is when All Might would have actually stayed in his small might form and been smiling at the fact that somebody saved the day. He'd be thinking that it's a pretty good thing that he didn't have to step in. And this is when All Might would walk away. As Deku, after finally escaping from the press, would end up finally making it home. This is when Deku would, of course, uh, knock at the door. She would say, Mom, I'm home! And Inko would rush at the door. She would just hug, give him a giant bear hug. Deku would hug her and he'd be like, Yo, Mom, you put on a few, didn't you? Inko, after hearing that, would slap Deku. Be like, how could you? And Deku would just start being like, Mom, I was kidding. As she would be like, uh-huh, kidding my butt. This is when she would basically look at Deku and basically they would just have a little bit of a funny moment as he would walk inside and he would see a giant feast ready in this version of events hisashi had ended up leaving inko because well he's just that type of person he went to go get some milk <sighs> some tough stuff some tough stuff that being said deku would basically have an incredible time with his mother and he would finally be able to catch up with her it's been so long since deku had been able to be with his mother this leads to Deku spending most of the 10 months actually hanging out with Inko instead of training. Due to the fact that training, Deku's pretty much already a master at the Water Stream Rock Smashing Fist. The only thing Deku can do now is basically re re uh, make it even more powerful. Get stronger himself so the techniques will have far more power behind them. And that's exactly what Deku does for the 10 months. He just improves his body strength as well. Uh, just kind of does a little bit of vigilantism and during the night however he never gets caught and it never goes out to the public eye so his vigilantism doesn't really end up amounting to really anything he just stops a couple of thugs and you know random villains just because that thrill of being a hero it's something that deku lives for that being said i'm just going to be skipping over to the day of the entrance exam and this is when deku would basically walk inside as it's at this point that Deku would basically get dropped off by his mother and she would say good luck to him as she'd be a little worried because, I mean, she knows how strong her dad is, but what about her baby? She doesn't know if he had that same potential, but from what she heard from Bang, there's no way he'll fail. He has to be powerful, just like her dad. And he, she would basically just wave Deku off as he would walk, walk over there. Before he could even make it inside, he would notice that there's a girl by him that was about to fall. Deku, after seeing that, would immediately rush over to Uraraka and pick her up before she could fall as she would be like uh who are you and Deku would look at her with like a weird expression on his face saying it's bad luck to fall during the, before an exam you guys you should be a little more careful next time a boy's not gonna lie when I go get a sip of water but anyways as I was saying Deku would look at Uraraka's he would then proceed to basically say that hey like, uh, you should be more careful next time. She would look at him and just be like, uh, yeah, I was a little clumsy. As she would look at Deku's physique and just be like, whoa, are you a third year? Deku would look at her and be like, no, no, I'm not a third year. I'm, my name is Izuku Midoriya. I'm a first year. I'm trying to at least be a first year. She would look at him and be like, whoa, isn't it crazy how this test is about to determine what happens with the rest of our lives? And Deku would be like, I wouldn't like to think about it like that. As it's at this point that Deku would basically just tell her rock a good luck and he would go inside to take the exam. To which Deku would end up passing by copying people's hand movements. During the time that he was with his grandpa, he kind of threw 
studying off to the side due to the fact that he was more focused on the martial arts aspect. However, Deku was still pretty smart, so he did of course answer a majority of the questions himself. However, the ones that he didn't know, he copied people's hand movements, similar to what Sasuke did in the in the test in the Naruto verse. That being said, this is when Deku would go outside to the basically the other portion of the exam and he would go outside as he would actually be by the front gate. There would be no Ida or Uraraka um, exchange in words because Deku would just pop in some earbuds and be at the front. Instead, excuse me for that, instead Uraraka would be the one who actually ends up walking over to Deku without Ida noticing and begins to talk to him and she's like, whoa, I didn't know I'd see you again. Deku would look at her and just be like take off his earbuds as he would say, huh? And she'd say, uh, oh, uh, sorry. Deku would just be like, no, no, it's okay. Don't worry about it. And Uraraka would just be like, oh, well, I just said it's crazy how we're going to be in the same area, you know? Uh, good luck. Deku would look at her and be like, you look really nervous. How about you breathe in and breathe out a little bit? It'll probably help you out. Uraraka would do so and she would feel a little better as Deku would then look at her and be like, good luck. He'd basically just he'd basically just pat her on the back and this is when immediately Deku before hearing anything on the speakers before hearing anything from present Mike would literally jump over the gate and before anybody gets a chance to do a thing Deku would have already destroyed seven robots like just immediately this would lead to present Mike being like what are you what are you guys all doing? You should follow after that kid's example. There's no countdowns in a real battle. Go, go, go. He would open the gate and Deku at this point would have already destroyed about 23 robots respectively. At this point Deku would continue to destroy more and more robots and it would just be insane, dude. This man would be going hard. Like this man would be going crazy. Water stream rock smashing fish just everything destroying robots left and right and by the end of the the entire time that he has, the full 10 minutes I believe it is, Deku would end up racking up about 143 robot points from all of the robots that he had destroyed. Not 143 robot destructions, but you know, the points. That being said, this is when Deku would actually feel that that was more than enough. All the other kids basically got something close to 30 or 40. And if he gets 143, there's no way they'll, he'll fail. Especially after passing that exam inside, he'll definitely have a spot reserved in UA. This this is when Deku would basically just pop pop one of his earbuds back in. Is this is when the ground would begin to shake, and Deku would look up as he would see a giant robot. But as he looks towards that direction, he would see people would start running from there. And this is when Deku, with his enhanced senses, would just hear somebody yell, "Help me!" As Deku would immediately just be like, "All right, somebody's in trouble." He would throw off the earbuds and just start rushing over to where Uraraka is at. As a zero pointer would be close to stepping on her, Deku would throw roll the rubble off of her in an instant, put her on his shoulders and rush away as he and Uraraka would get out of there immediately. Due to the fact that Deku doesn't have any techniques to destroy that zero pointer just yet, Deku would uh, would basically aim to stay away from it. However, there is something that Deku would do. Deku would look towards that zero pointer and just be like, if I don't stop that thing now in its pace, then the other kids might get hurt as well. As he would immediately, using his heroic know-how, would immediately use the water stream rock smashing fist. As he would use one of the techniques to basically destroy both the legs. And he would do that simultaneously, mind you. Like, he would legit, like, punch one of the, one of the legs so many times that it would just turn into rubble. And he would do the same thing with his elbow to the other one. As well as punching the robot in the knee to the point where that robot literally fell and it was just on the ground, unable to stand anymore. So the zero pointer was basically taken care of. That being said, Deku would get 143 uh, robot points on top of 60 rescue points for saving Uraraka. And not even like, not even like in the original where he got saved by her as well. Oh no, he did everything. This basically leads to people looking at Deku's direction, just like what the actual beep you guys knew what, what the word was going to be but anyways i don't want to get the yellow check mark so <laughs> that being said this is when deku would basically look towards uraraka's direction as he would smile at her as he has her in her in his arms and uraraka would turn bright red this is when deku would basically drop her off at recovery girls and he would end up going back home without getting uraraka's number meaning there will be zero interactions between them that being said, this is when Deku would arrive home and he would basically just tell his mom that he guarantees her that he passed. As they would wait about two days or no, a week for the letter to come in, right? 
And during that time, Deku would of course train on his techniques, seeing that if there's ever a threat that's that huge and Deku is too weak to stop it, then like Deku is going to be just as useless as some of the pro heroes that he that he helped just the other day, a couple months ago actually. Deku would start thinking that he needs to get even more powerful, even more strength, and he needs to be able to rival even the levels of All Might himself, go beyond that. His grandfather believes that he has the potential to become that strong, so he will believe in his grandfather and do just that. That being said, Deku would train extremely hard for the next week that follows until he finally gets his letter, to which he basically gets told that he got in, and he would end up celebrating with his mom by going out to dinner, and he would of course get on a FaceTime call with his grandpa, telling him that he got in with Grant with uh, with uh, Bang basically just being like. <laughs> Kid, I knew you'd get in. As Deku would look at, at his grandpa through his phone and he would just be like, well, I gotta go train a little bit. As grandpa would just chuckle and be like, all right, sure thing. Make sure you go train, especially after what happened on that last fight. Deku would look at him and just be like, yeah, I will. As it's at this point that Deku would then finally just begin training until the first day of UA. Deku would wake up that morning and you know, go take a shower, you know, go brush his teeth and get ready for his first day of UA. Deku would begin to basically get all dripped out with his, uh, you know, his school outfit. And honestly, there's not really much to cover in terms of stuff for until he arrives. So I'm just basically going to pick off right when Deku basically makes it to his actual class. This is when Deku would basically proceed to arrive and he would see a giant door to which Deku would wonder why this door is so big. This is when Deku would just be like, ah, there's probably some kids with some gigantification quirks, just like Mount Lady anyways. So that might be it. As Deku would then be like, all right, well, let's go. First day of UA. And immediately when Deku would walk into the classroom, Bakugo would be standing there waiting for him, not even arguing with Ida. He would just be standing there by one of the desks. As immediately when Deku would walk inside, Bakugo would look at Deku as he would say, hey. As Deku would look at Bakugo, he would immediately say, Kachan, it's been forever. How you been? This is when Bakugo would look at Deku and say, I've been good. I was good. That is until you showed up. You know, Deku, I didn't need your saving back there. Those 10 months, I didn't need your help. I could have gone out of there by myself. Some quirkless wannabe will never save me ever again. You didn't do a thing. As he would then walk off and he would then sit down to which Ida would finally start annoying Bakugo due to the fact that Bakugo still sits down in a bad manner. That being said, the entire class would basically just be looking at Bakugo and Deku and Deku would just go over there to which he basically sits down and this is when Aizawa would finally get up as he would begin to basically tell them all that they're going to be taking a quirk exam to see whether they do or don't belong in UA. As they would all be like, what? But we already passed. Like, what are you talking about? Aizawa would say that you already passed to the principal, but to me, you still haven't proved yourself. Throw these on and meet me outside. To which Uraraka would say, but what about orientation? Aizawa would look at her and say, you really think that orientation is something that matters? Put these on right now or else I'll expel you on the spot. Uraraka would put it on and everybody would meet Aizawa outside. As it's at this point that Bakugo would go into the guy's locker room and when he would see Deku take off his shirt, he would see a little salty. To which it's at this point that, you know, Deku would basically look at Bakugo and he would see that Bakugo definitely kept up with his training as well. This is when they would both basically get ready and it's at this point that they would both basically go outside and take the quirk exam. To which Deku would be throwing the ball and Bakugo would just be like, hey, why'd you give that ball to that quirkless loser? He should be the weakest one out of all of us. He has no quirk. Aizawa would look at Bakugos. He would say, he may be quirkless, but he's the strongest one here the way I see it. The fact that he's quirkless and he even made it into UA should be a sign to just how impressive he is. The rest of you probably rely on your quirks too much. This kid right here, he has real talent. So I suggest you stay quiet because if I get another one of those outbursts, I will be expelling you. Bakugo would look at that and he would then be like, uh, uh, okay. And it's at this point that basically the rest of the exams would go. And after all of the exams would basically happen, Bakugo would notice that Deku does well and even more better than Bakugo does in each and every single one of the aspects. Even in the long jump, the fact that like Bakugo literally flew and Deku jumped over that and jumped even further than he did. So that would piss Bakugo off and he would basically have one punch man level stats in terms of how incredible he did for this part. 
That being said, Bakugo would get extremely angry. And after class, Bakugo would walk over to Deku. As Deku basically is by his locker putting all his stuff away. As he would throw his backpack on, Bakugo would walk up to Deku and slam his locker. As he would say, you got some nerve showing up here after all this time. Think you can just leave and then come back powerful? I'll find out what you did, Deku. And I'll, and I'll, I'll attain that same level of power. Don't think that you're something now just because you learned a little bit of martial arts. Deku would look towards Bakugo's direction and just look at him as he would say, You know, Bakugo, I'm not the same weakling you remember, so you better back off right now. As he would push Bakugo, and Aizawa would turn the corner. As Bakugo would notice that, he would then turn towards Deku's direction, give him a glare, and walk away. As it's at this point that Deku and Bakugo would both end up walking home, and, well, they would both have some very, very interesting thoughts going through their heads. Deku would just be thinking, why can't Bakugo get over the past? I mean, if anything, I should be mad at him. He used to bully me and make my life miserable. Why does he get to be the one who's upset about everything? It's unfair. He would then look he would then look outside out of his window and then just think that it's it's whatever. Bakugo is just gonna be in his way no matter what. So he needs to just ignore him. And he's even weaker than him now, so it doesn't matter. As it's at this point that the very next day, we are finally going to be covering the heroes versus villains event. That being said, they would basically all go to class, and their first, their very next day of class would basically be rather normal. There would really be nothing going on up until the final period. During that day, Deku had basically been flirting it up with Uraraka, and she had actually been having to taking, she would have actually taken a huge liking to De if I can only talk, she would have ended up taking a huge liking towards Deku. That being said, this is when the final period would arrive, their hero training course. As right before the class could even start, All Might would bust in through the door saying, I am here, walking in like a normal person. As all the class would just be like, All Might, including Deku. He hadn't met him yet. And Deku would even fanboy over All Might just as well as everybody else did. All Might is still technically his number one hero. However, if he really had to choose between All Might or his grandpa, his grandpa would win all the, every time. That being said, Deku would then look at All Might and just be amazed he looks even cooler in person that's what Deku would be thinking and this one all Might would just talk to the kids telling them all that the clothes make the pros and that they need to meet them outside to which they're going to be having a heroes versus villains combat exam to which bakugo would smirks thinking that he might have a chance to fight against Deku, and that'll be great he'll finally show them the difference between their power during the time that Deku spent, you know, probably doing nothing for those 10 months, after Bakugo gets saved by Deku, he trained like never before, to never be saved by a quirkless kid ever again. That being said, they would all go outside and put on their hero costumes. Deku would walk outside looking exactly like Garo. Literally exactly like him. The picture you guys see up above, actually, wait, no, you guys don't see a picture up above because you guys see gameplay. <laughs> oh yeah, speaking of the gameplay, if you guys are watching the gameplay and you guys saw like the first 10 minutes, I was playing pretty good and then like the rest of it, it just got booty. Well, that's because my siblings started playing. I kind of got bored of playing Once Justice and I was like, hey, you guys want to play for the gameplay? They were like, yeah, and then I was like, all right. And uh, But the the ending, like probably around like the 50 minute to an hour mark, that's probably going to be me playing. So, that being said, <clears throat> this would basically lead to the teams being announced. Teams would of course be as it did in canon, to which it would be Bakugo and or no it Bakugo and Ida versus Deku and Uraraka. That being said, it's at this point that they would all basically go inside, and Deku would be of course the hero with Uraraka being the villain. At that after realizing that he's going to be playing the villain, Bakugo would just just kind of be angry and like just be like, huh, whatever. As he would walk over there with Ida, he would be like, come on, four eyes, let's go. Uh, it's at this point that Ida would be like, do not refer to your classmates in that manner. As it's at this point that, that you know, Bakugo would just be like, yeah, whatever. As it's at this point that Bakugo would basically walk inside. And Bakugo would, as soon as they would walk inside and get alone, he would look towards Ida's direction as he would say, hey, don't drop your guard with that little Deku kid. Or the one that's named Izuku Midoriya. He's a villain. And that's all he'll ever be. I still remember back then when we were kids, he would always talk about wanting to become a great villain someday and overthrowing hero society. Don't trust him. I don't believe in his lies. Don't even, don't even get near him because the slightest mistake can probably get you ended. 
Ida would hear that and be like, what do you mean? He's incredibly kind to everybody. And he even shows her great signs of being a great hero in the future. Are you lying to me? Bakugo would continue to tell him he's not. And he would just say he doesn't have to believe him if he doesn't want to. To which Bakugo would say that he's going to go handle him because he's the only one that can do it. And it's at this point that Deku would look at Urakas. He would say that she needs to go hide somewhere and that they need to go find the bomb. That he's going to handle Bakugo. Uraka would say, yeah, yeah, right. And this is when Bakugo would say, well, 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 if it isn't, if look who we have here. Old villain. As Deku would be like, I'm not a villain, Kachan. And everybody in the little place where they can see the battle would be hearing what's going on. They would be like, villain, but Deku's the hero. He'd be like, they probably have their roles confused or something. Bakugo would look at Deku and say, don't lie to me, Deku. I know you still want to become a villain. You think I've forgotten about all those things that you did to me back then? Deku would look at Bakugo and just be like, what are you talking about, Bakugo? You were the... But before he can even finish that sentence, Bakugo would rush at him and throw an explosion. To which he tries to fight in a way that it makes it look like Bakugo's the one who's trying to defend everybody. This is when Deku would basically use his techniques and he would send Bakugo crashing into the wall. To which Bakugo would start faking a sort of heroic attitude. He'd be like, oh, never. <coughs> Cough out some blood and be like, give up to you, you villain. I'm the only one who can see through your lies, and you're not going to be hurting any of my classmates. As Deku would say, what are you talking about, Bakugo? You're getting on my nerves. This one, Bakugo would begin to spout out more and more lies, and Deku would start losing his cool as he's just like, Bakugo! He would then end up using one of his techniques, to which he would hit Bakugo a bunch of times. It would be similar to the 64 palm uh, strike, as Deku would land 24 consecutive hits on Bakugo in under 10 seconds, mind you. Nah, 10 seconds, that's light work. In under a second. And it's at this point that, Deku, that Bakugo would fall to his knees, and he would then hear his gauntlets both charged up, as Bakugo would go down on the ground and say that, I have to do what I have to do. Deku would look at Bakugo and be like, oh yeah, we'll do it then. As Bakugo would say, gladly. He would rip one of the pins off with his hand and the other one he would rip out with his teeth. As he would aim them both at Deku and then say, now die villain. As the explosion would go off in Deku's direction and he would send him flying. Deku would crash out of the vil out of the building, and it's at this point that Deku would have barely caught himself by one of the pieces of, of, um, of pipelines, and he would end up jumping back up there as he would get angry by what Bakugo just did. And it's at this point that Deku would start completely destroying Bakugo. He would literally tear him limb from limb. Deku could not control the rage that was welling up be be uh, beneath the surface. Deku would lose his cool, and he would end up destroying De Bakugo's knees, he would break them, bust them in, his arms, he would break them as well, and he would then even go to Bakugo as he would smash his head onto the ground multiple times, to the point where All Might would say, that's enough, young Midoriya. Deku would look at him and say, he used a full power explosion on me, that would have been anybody else, they would have died, and, ba and All Might would then look towards Deku as he would say, but it was you, that's why he used it. He knew you would survive. Deku would look at All Might as he would say, I can't believe this. You're, you're taking his side? As All Might would say, the way I see it, there's only one side. Go to the office. As Deku would say, what? And All Might would say, you heard me. Go to the office. Nezu would warn Deku and tell him that if he has another one of those outbursts, he'll get expelled. And Deku would then get suspended for one week. To the point where he would just go back home and get angry. He would tell his mother about what happened. And well, this is when Deku would just be like, oh, I can't believe it. During that week that Deku wasn't in school, however, Bakugo would take full advantage and begin to spread even more lies about Deku, causing Deku for the day he returns for people to all look at him strangely. They would all believe the rumors that Bakugo was spreading about, around about him. And this would continue up until Deku returns on the day of the USJ. During the time that Deku wasn't at school, however, he would have definitely ended up talking to Bane and his mother about what happened. He would have talked to Bane the same morning that he left before school, and he would end up telling Deku to just not do anything. If Bakugo wants to make Deku look out like a villain, then prove him wrong. 
be so heroic that nobody can believe him and prove that you aren't the person that they say there is. There's always going to be obstacles before you and people who want to put you down. But that's the moment that you always have to show your true colors. And you have to prove them wrong. You have to show them that you are better than what they expect you to be. And you have to always be better than, than them. As Deku would say, you're right, Gramps. I'll do that. Also, guys, in case you guys hear any thunder or rain in the background, it is raining with a little bit of thunder. So, you know, apologies for that. But that being said, it shouldn't be too loud since right now I honestly can't hear a thing and it's pretty silent in my house at this moment. But yeah, this is when Deku would basically rush into the USJ as no not rush in there but they would all go to the usj right and this is when sue you and everybody in the bus would just look at deku in a rude way they would then begin to talk about who the most powerful in the class is and this is when sue you would say that it's that villain over there as everybody would look towards deku's direction bakugo would smirk as he's looking right at deku and deku would just be like they believe him he would just push that to the back of his mind and just sit down as he's silent and he looks out the window. This is when he and everybody would get in line and people would shove Deku around as Deku just gets angered by that but remembers what his grandfather said. And he would walk inside to which 13 would give her speech. This would lead to Kurogiri appearing with Bakugo and Kirishima rushing at him similar to Canon, but everybody would still end up getting teleported to their respective areas. As soon as they would arrive, Suyu, she wouldn't save Deku. She would leave him there to drown and get a attacked by the villains which would cause Deku to have to use techniques underwater which would make them be sluggish but Deku would end up barely narrowly escaping from all the villains that were swarming him and Deku would look towards Suyu as he gives her an angered look telling her why he didn't save her. Suyu would say that she would never save a villain and Deku would look at her as he just gets angry and says well whatever. There's no time to think about that. Many of us are, are getting hurt out there. We need to go help them. Suyu would say, what do you mean we? I'm not going to be by you. And Deku would then look at Suyu as he's like, this is no time for that. Mineta would look at Deku and he would just be like, yeah. Uh, same with her. He would grab Suyu by the chest and Suyu would then get angry. She would hit him with his, her tongue. Mineta would be like, oh yeah, that's the spot. And this is when Deku would just be like, you weirdo. As it's at this point that Deku would say, well, whatever. I don't care if you guys don't want to get saved. This is my job. He would grab Suyu and Mineta with one arm. And with the other, he would strike down to the to the water. As they would create a wind pressure so powerful, similar to the one in canon, all the villains would get taken out. And Deku would then take them ba right back to land. As it's at this point that... Uh, Aizawa had already been basically fighting against all the people and the Nomu had already rushed towards him due to the fact that you know all that other stuff happened Kur uh, Shigaraki would walk up to him and be like you're so cool Aizawa getting beaten and you're still refusing to lose as the Nomu's bashing his skull into the ground Deku at this point would run away from Suyu and Mineta and he would immediately rush towards Aizawa as Deku would hit the Nomu sending it flying back a little bit a couple of feet and Deku would then grab Aizawa, throw him on his shoulders. He would say, we got to get you out of here. Aizawa would look at Deku and just be like, drop me. He's too powerful. Deku would look at Aizawa as he would say, wait, you can take away quirks, can't you? He would look towards Aizawa as Aizawa would say, yeah, his regener he has regeneration and shock absorption from what I can tell. And Deku would then look at him as he would say, all right. What, what does that leave him with? Why was he overpowering him? And Aizawa would tell Deku that his strength is incredible. Deku would then look at Aizawa and say that there's only one way they're going to stop him, but he needs his help. Aizawa would look at Deku and he would then say, All right, kid, do your best. As he would then deactivate his quirk, deactivating the Nomu's regeneration and shock absorption. And it's at this point that Deku would drop Aizawa onto the ground. As he would rush towards the Nomu, they would then get into a battle similar to the one where uh, All Might and the Nomu were punching at each other, where they were like going back and forth with like 50 punches. They would hit each other and Deku would reflect each and every single one of the Nomu's hits until one of them would land square on Deku's head. However, when it does, he would do a move similar to Garo's when Tank Top Master hit him and he would reflect the damage two times harder onto the Nomu's head, sending the Nomu's head crashing onto the ground. And with no regeneration, the Nomu would fall to the ground and die. 
after that, Shigaraki would look at him and he would say, It's not fair! It's not fair! He cheated! He cheated! He would rush at Deku using his quirk. And this is when he would basically almost put all five fingers of him on himself. If it wasn't for Aizawa who deactivated Shigaraki's quirk. It's at this point that Deku would stomp on Shigaraki's foot, causing him to not be able to move. And Deku would then unleash a hundred hits on, on Shigaraki. Which would drop Shigaraki onto the ground like a bag of potatoes and it's at this point that Aizawa would tell Deku to stop but this one Shigura uh, uh, Kurogiri would blitz in with the portal trying to grab Shigaraki but before he could do a thing Deku would grab Shigaraki by the arm so strong that the that the force of the portal and Deku's grip would end up ripping off Shigaraki's arm and as that happened All Might arrived he would see what Deku had done to the to Shigaraki. And it's at this point that All Might would jump down there with a little bit of a frowning expression on his face. As he would look towards Deku's direction, he would tell him to come with him. As Deku would look at All Might and say, what are you talking about, All Might? This was an accident. All Might would look at him and say, look at what you did to that thing. What if that was a person? Deku would say, that thing wasn't alive. It was powerful. I dare to say it was even on your level, All Might. If anything, I helped. Aizawa was getting killed out there. I saved him. Aizawa would then stand up weakly as he would say, Kit, you should have never killed anything. And Deku would then look at Aizawa as he would say, You're kidding, right? I saved your life. I, I, I'm i a hero. What are you talking about? All Might would then grab Deku by the shoulder and grip it as he would say, Come with me, young man. I don't want to have to use force. Deku would then look towards All Might as he would say, You're serious? I I did all of this, and I tried to be better. I tried to be strong. I tried to be a hero, just like all of you guys have said. Quirkless. I did everything. I trained for years. This is how you're going to repay me. Well, you know what, what All Might? If you want me to become a villain, then I'll be one. As you would hit All Might right on his weak spot, he would crush All Might's respiratory system and and then proceed to basically kick All Might to the point where he sends All Might spinning and crashing onto the ground. Aizawa would try to use his quirk, but Deku would walk over to him as he would say, Remember Aizawa, I'm quirkless. As it's at this point that Deku would kick Aizawa into the wall and he would then rush out of there. So he would look towards Bakugo's direction before he leaves. He would then get out of there and it's at this point that Deku would run away as a bunch of pro heroes would actually begin to tail behind him. As Deku would not even be able to go home. Or actually he would. He would rush home, grab some of his essentials as he would climb in from his window. And this is when Deku would just have one thought in his mind. They want me to become a villain. I'll be a villain. I'll kill every last hero. If they're all going to be corrupt like this, then there's no need for a hero society. This is when Deku would finally start destroying heroes all over. He would begin with the hero Death Arms, one that he views as a fake hero, someone who didn't even jump in to stop the sludge villain. Next, he would obliterate Ryoko, the dragon hero, Nejire's little master. And this is when Deku would then begin to destroy more smaller scale villains. Until one day, Deku would attempt to fight Mirko. However, Deku would get his stuff rocked. I'm going to be saying that in this version, Mirko fights in a more animalistic style, kind of like how Dogman did. And, and similar to how uh, Garo lost to Dogman, Deku would end up losing <coughs> to Mirko. But not only did he end up losing to Mirko, he even ended up fight. He even ended up getting jumped by Ectoplasm, Gunhead, Snipe. Fat Gum and Mount Lady. When he arrived, the fight was more or less even. Deku and Herb were swapping a bunch of blows, but Mirko was definitely on the losing end. However, this is when a bunch of clones would begin to appear, and they would all start swarming Deku, as it's at this point that a man with guns on his hand would start shooting at Deku's direction, and another one from the top of a building, this being Snipe, would start shooting at Deku's direction, to which Deku would barely be able to dodge the, the attacks. But if Garo could dodge a literal minigun, I doubt Deku can't uh, dodge a sniper bullet. That being said, he would start being on the defensive end, and this one Fat Gum would come behind him and hit him with his belly away as Mount Lady would grow and they would all just look at Deku with anger on their faces telling him that today the hero killer ends as it's at this point that Deku would begin to start losing horribly and if I forgot to mention 
they're in an area very close to Hosu City, right in the area where Stain was at last. However, right when Deku would begin to get on the losing end, his hair would begin to go blood red as someone would jump in, this person being Stain, the true hero killer. He would jump in and begin to and stab into Gunhead's like heart as he would rip out the sword, lick it, and it's immediately when he would just rush at a bunch of the other villains. As he would cut Thakum, and Thakum would be paralyzed. This is when Deku would look at Stain and wonder if he's on his side, but he would just put that to the back of his mind, seeing as right now he is on his side. He would then rush at the rest of the people who are fighting against him, and Deku and Stain would both be just enough to overpower the villains that I mentioned. Keep in mind, Deku and Stain overpowered Mirko, who was already weakened, Ecto Plasm Gunhead who had already died, Snipe who was taken out by a long range attack by Deku, Fakum and Mount Lady. They took them all out alone. But after this, Deku would drop down to the ground and Deku would then get taken in by Stain as he would arrive to Stain's little lair to which Stain would end up healing Deku. And it's at this point that Stain would ask Deku why he does what he does. Deku would explain to, to Stain his backstory and Stain would understand. They would both look at each other and say that their goal is to rid the world of fake heroes similar to Endeavor and Bakugo. And it's at this point that Deku would end up basically suggesting that they might as well join a certain league that he's very familiar with. Stain would hear the idea and kind of reject it due to the fact that they don't need anything like that. It's at this point that all over the world they would start hearing uh, things about these two villains which are going around destroying heroes and Bang, Bang would get word of what his grandson is up to. He failed. He took his teachings and went to the dark side. It wasn't his fault. Deku could have became one of the greatest heroes of all time, but Baku, Bakugo ruined everything. He turned the world against him in the blink of an eye, and Deku's going to get his revenge. Trust me, guys. Deku's going to get his revenge. <clears throat> that being said, it's at this point that they would basically end up just... Um, ended up getting a little bit of publicity out there and Stain would drop a little bit of a pu of a private message on the dark web telling anybody who wants to join their cause to meet them at this area to which they would end up getting more people to join them such as Toga, Dobby, and uh, let's see, uh, Spinner, 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 yep, Spinner, and uh, yeah, they would end up having three members join them as it's at this point that I'm just going to say that the US, the UA Sports Festival had just finished, and this is when they're on their Hosu attack. At this point, they're they're currently taking out a bunch of heroes in the area, meaning that they had already taken care of Native. And this is when Ida would come rushing in, as before Ida even got the chance to even hit hit anybody or say a word, Dobby would point his hand at him and literally cremate him on the spot. Meaning Ida, yeah, he loses his life in this version. That being said, this would lead to the rest of the people who would arrive, such as to the Endeavor and Todoroki. And after Deku sees those two, he would immediately look at Stain as he would say that there's Nomus all over the place. But since they're not heroes, they might as well use them to their advantage. They would rush at Endeavor and Todoroki and they would ambush them. Dobby, Spinner, twice, Toga. No, wait, not twice, but um, Dobby, Spinner, Toga and uh, Stain and Deku would just rush in at them and they would begin to completely obliterate Endeavor and Todoroki. Todoroki and Endeavor would have tried their hardest and best but there was absolutely zero hope for them and it's at this point it's at this point that another hero would show up this person being best genius and guess who he shows up with yeah he shows up with Bakugo that being said this is when Deku would see Best Genius and he would say, Look, it's another hero, a top one. As Stain would look towards Best Genius' direction, 
he would lick his blade and he would immediately tell the rest of them to go rush at the Nomu, seeing as they will become a problem if they don't get taken care of soon. So the rest of them would rush at them, with the exception of Toga. So Toga and Stain would both team up on Bestinus and Deku would as well. And Bakugo would be tailing behind Bestinus, so he wouldn't have seen him just yet. However, this is when Deku would see out of the corner of his eye, a boy with blonde hair would rush at him with explosions. Deku would dodge the blow, spinning in the air, grab Bakugo by the head and smash it into the ground. As it's at this point that Deku would look at Bakugo, pick him up by the throat, and crush his voice box. As Bakugo would be like, <coughs> just spitting out blood, and Deku would look at him as he would say, I honestly didn't think I'd get my revenge so soon, Bakugo. Thank you for making it so easy. He would look towards Stain's direction and say, You guys can handle him, right? Stain would say they can, and this is when Deku would just look towards Bakugo, as he would take him to an abandoned alleyway, where Deku would begin to do things to this man slowly. He would begin to torture the man, to say it lightly. Deku would, um... Yeah, he's um, he's obliterating Bakugo. He's breaking bones. He's literally he's taking some knives and just carving his name onto Bakugo's back. And this is when Deku would light Bakugo's dead body on fire at the end of everything. After this, Deku would go back out there, and it's at this point that Best Genus had been taken care of. It's at this point that after after a while, the death of All Might would finally go public, and the death of Endeavor best genus and more pro heroes this would lead to crime rates spiking up and a bunch of villains would finally go crazy this would lead to all for one finally revealing himself to the light and he would have actually ended up stealing shigaraki's quirk due to the fact that without an, one arm he's useless at this point so shigaraki yeah he's he's long gone he failed all for one and all for one got rid of him real quick seeing as all Met was all gone so there was really no reason that being said this is when Stain would realize after about two weeks of all for one and a bunch of villains just going insane with like just destroying people and you know hurting innocent people Stain would say that they need to help take out these villains the fake heroes aren't the threat now now what they need to handle are the fake are villains who seek nothing but destruction but Deku would look at Stain and say why should we this world took everything from me now They'll have to watch as I take everything from them. As he would pierce his arm through Stain's chest, crush the heart. He would then look at Dobby, Toga, and Spinner. As he would look at them and say, Now, will you guys join me? Or are you guys going to end up just like him? As they would look towards his direction, they would say, What? What? We'll join you. With the exception of Spinner. This is when Deku, Dobby, and Toga would gang up on him and they would end him immediately. This would lead to Deku then finally realizing that if he wants to take everything from them, he has to do it personally, not let some all for one person do it for him. So this is when Deku would look for all for one for about two weeks and he would finally find him at the area to which the Liberation Army stuff happened. All for one and his League of Villains would have already destroyed him, meaning that all for one was weakened after using all, those, all that power. But before all for one could teleport away, Deku would arrive, jumping down from a building, as he would say, Pleased to meet you, Offer One. Offer One would look at Deku and just say, Ah, hero killer, Garo. He would look at him and say, To what do I owe the pleasure? Do you want to join the League of Villains? Deku would look at, at, at uh, Offer One and say, No. Something a bit more uh, interesting. This is when Deku would look at Offer One, walk over to him, and go to shake his hand as he would say, I want an alliance. I don't want to join you. Both of us, together, we can take over this putrid world. And this is when Offer One would stick his hand out as he would trust Deku. But this, this is when Deku would in an instant decapitate Offer One using a swift slash of his nails. Offer One's head would drop to the ground and Deku would start falling into a, a hysterical laughter. This is when Deku would smile and everyone would look at him as Deku would say, I'm not going to become the strongest hero anymore. I'm going to become the strongest villain and there will be not a single person who can do a thing about it. Nobody will stand in my way. He would breathe and then he would finally start hysterically laughing at the sky as he would then say looks like bakugo was right 
He was right all along. Looks like these are my true colors. I can't hold it back anymore. As this is when somebody would arrive on the battlefield. This person being his grandfather, Bang. He would arrive there with someone else, his brother, as he would look towards his grandson and say what happened. Izuku, don't do this. There's still time. You can still repent for what you did. This doesn't have to end the w how you both know we it'll end. As Deku would look towards him and say, so what old man? Think just because you beat me about 12 months ago, it's going to happen again in your dreams. I've become even more powerful than you could have ever imagined. As it's at this point that we are now going to have a flashback to the battle. Deku and 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 um what's it called and Bang would have both ended up getting ready and they would rush at each other similar to when swordsmen rush and hit one strike. Now in that strike, Deku would have landed about 20 hits, but but um Bang, he would have landed a consecutive 100, dropping Deku straight to the ground. Yeah, the man's old, but Deku, he's an experience still. Like, the man has way too much experience for Deku to handle. And that being said, as soon as his brother arrives, Deku would look at him and say, So you need him to beat me now, huh? Looks like I finally did become more powerful than you, you wretched old man. Your lessons serve nothing to me other than to make me miserable. Look at what you created. Look at me. Bang would look at his grandson and just say, I'm sorry. I should have never taken you in. It was a mistake from the beginning. As he would look towards his grandfather and laugh as he would say, Yeah, I guess it was. As he would immediately just get into a stance. Bang would and his brother would. And this would be a very, very similar battle to the one that happened in the anime adaptation. So if you guys want to know how this battle basically goes, think Garo versus Bang and his brother in the anime. Except they're both 10 years younger and Deku has way less experience. He's about two times, he's about like 1.5 times stronger than the Garo who was there at, at, at that fight. So it definitely helps. But in at the end of the day, Deku gets obliterated. He has two masters of the water stream and the and the um, and the rock smashing fist and the wind crushes rock smashing fist. I believe it's what it's called, right? Yeah. But he has two masters and ultimately Deku is defeated. And that is where we are going to be leaving off. What if Deku was Garo's reincarnation? If you guys want to see how that battle truly played out, I would suggest going down below in the link in the description and clicking on the video, Bang versus Garo and his brother or something like that. Just look that up. It's pretty similar to that, That's which is why I didn't really cover it in too much detail, but Deku would get obliterated by them, to say the absolute least. He still, isn't mon he still hasn't turned into a monster, so Deku just gets obliterated before anything else can start and hero society it would rebuild itself but that is where this story of what if deku was garo's reincarnation ends i hope you guys enjoyed the story seeing as it was a lot of fun to record it was a lot of fun to make it was a very fast paced but short and sweet story i believe that it was one of my best ones to date i feel like a lot of one punch man fans are probably going to be very mixed when it comes to what they think about the ending see i honestly could have gone with the route where deku you know makes up for himself at the ua usj however i decided to have a little bit of a different twist to the story i wanted deku to truly follow in garo's footsteps and just end up in a bad place i guess that being said though guys you guys know what the drill is it has been your boy zether i love each and every single one of you guys thank you guys so much for 16k but i am out peace